Okay, the next talk is SDR Makerspace by Alexandra Chete, who mm -hmm. has also done GQRX. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone, and thanks for uh, joining me for this talk, and thanks to the organizers for giving us the opportunity to present this project called SDR Makerspace, which is a collaboration between uh, the European Space Agency and Libre Space Foundation. Um, this is my first time at FOSTEM and also actually the first contact with the GNU radio community. So uh, those of you who don't know me yet, I uh, work as a software engineer in the SATCOM industry, uh, mostly with control systems and embedded systems. But uh, I have been in uh, contact with, uh, of, I had my first contact with open source already back in 1995. So yeah, I'm actually quite old. <laughs> and uh, the way it happened back then was that I wanted to get into programming, learn to program computers. But uh, those of you who are old enough to remember those days, you know, we had like uh, DOS 6 point something and Windows 3.1 and uh, getting the development tools were, weren't quite so easy. So uh, I got to university and uh, I got uh, exposed to a very early version of Linux, which was quite good because we had all uh, development tools uh, available for using, building software. And uh, I also had the opportunity to use the internet suddenly and get a lot of uh, open source software already back then and see how other people were uh, writing code and uh, do what uh, today is known the copy and paste uh, thing from Stack Overflow. It existed already back then. So it's, uh, that's how I got into software engineering. And clearly I, I realized the value of open source for me personally and that's how I started to write open source software uh, in the beginning. And uh, eventually I got involved with the uh, Libre Space Foundation, which is, in, uh, which is a non-profit organization dedicated for uh, promoting open source in, uh, in, in the space industry and the space communities in general. You probably know them from the SETNOX uh, project, which is a global network of ground stations available, uh, well, in principle for everyone who is, participates in the community. And they have also uh, built a UP set together with uh, the University of uh, Patras, I believe. Uh, and UP set was the first uh, open source satellite uh, to be built and launched. Uh, it was launched in 2017. It uh, worked for a while, but uh, as often it happens, CubeSats uh, have a very short lifetime. And the kind of launch. Uh, Uh, just uh, briefly about the SETNOX network, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a global network of satellite ground stations. Uh, we are not talking about big 20-meter uh, uh, parabolic uh, arrays and things like that. No, just some small uh, amateur-level ground stations for now. They are distributed all over the world, and the idea is that uh, users who uh, either are interested in satellites or operating satellites can uh, schedule observations uh, over several ground stations and get uh, receive telemetry uh, or enhance their coverage instead of just having one or two ground stations. Uh, and uh, already today, uh, the network is, I think we can safely say it's global. Uh, this uh, screenshot uh, or this map uh, was taken about one month ago, so I'm pretty sure the network has grown since then. The green dots uh, represent uh, active ground stations that are actively producing data. The orange ones are also receiving data, but they are in what we call the testing phase. So they are being tested before they are uh, deployed um, into production. And I don't have the numbers, uh, but uh, I think it's an insane amount of uh, data is being collected every single day. So it wor it's working quite well. How much? 2,000 observations per day. 2,000 satellite observations per day. So, uh, yeah. That means 2,000 satellite passes uh, over a ground station. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's uh, working pretty well and it's still a work in progress. Of course, it's built using open source technologies and all the software that has been built for this infrastructure is available on the, on the internet. So. Now, uh, last year, uh, I had the uh, opportunity to be at the open source CubeSat workshop, which is, was, it was the second CubeSat workshop uh, organized uh, by uh, some uh, very nice people from the European Space Agency and hosted by the European Space Astronomy Center in Madrid. 
It was undoubtedly one of the best uh, conferences I've been to or workshops I've been to. And if you look at the group photo, you can see there are a lot of young people and uh, the age distribution is maybe a little uh, broader than you normally see at science conferences. Let's see what, at least what I used to see. And uh, it, it was a great, uh, great experience to meet all these young people uh, who, were, who were still at university being passionate about both space and open source because uh, the space industry used to be one of the, or is, is an industry with a lot of friction and a lot, uh, it takes time to ha have things changed. So, but all these young people will eventually graduate and get out into industry and they will influence their uh, future employers to be more open. So uh, there was a lot of uh, GNU radio talk. Uh, you can see uh, on this first picture, Michelle uh, talking about uh, the AMSET GNU radio DVBS receiver project. And uh, on the other picture, it was uh, just a typical lunch break where uh, a 16 year old uh, Julian, who has his own company building open source satellites, is presenting his first uh, pocket cube satellite uh, to uh, Danny and uh, Peter N4IP, who I think many of you know as a quite famous person in the SDR community. So it was a, a great uh, co community is being built up around that event. We, we also uh, saw the CubeSat ground station at the European Space Astronomy Center, which uh, I think is a quite, or I'd like to think that it's a typical uh, CubeSat ground station setup. They have uh, two antennas for two band directional antennas on a two axis rotor some uh, rack uh, equipment for the actual radio and power supplies. And you cannot see, but there are actually two hack RF devices there, uh, open source hardware, for those of you who know. And they are running G-Predict and GQRX uh, as the software for the ground station. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, potential for, uh, for us to make a lot of good open source uh, software and hardware and just technology uh, knowledge in general and bring it into uh, uh, to the space community. Now I think uh, those of you who work in space or just as the art in general know that they are quite uh, difficult and uh, complex topics. Uh, there's a lot of uh, engineering disciplines that need to work together and you need to do a lot of testing and design and integration and so in that area both uh, Space and SDR has a lot in common. I mean, just to to design a software-defined radio system, you need to know uh, RF and uh, analog and digital electronics, uh, math, DSP, uh, software engineering, and there are probably a little more uh, that I can think about. So uh, there's a lot of it can be quite risky to use these technologies without having sufficient understanding. And that's exactly what we uh, see quite often in. Uh, CubeSat missions that uh, the co communication subsystem is just left as a kind of like, uh, well, it's, it's got to work. I mean, we have cell phones and they work all the time, send signals. So, I mean, why, why wouldn't a, a CubeSat radio just work? Uh, and unfortunately, many missions fail because people don't put enough effort in it or because it's just too difficult to them and come as a surprise. So uh, the, uh, one of the objectives with the SDR Makerspace project is to simply create a set of open source hardware and software and uh, technology tools or knowledge and uh, make it available as kind of like off the shelf uh, uh, projects and components that people can use in the, f in the, in the future, both uh, CubeSats and uh, also space industry in general, if they are interested. So as I mentioned, it's a collaboration between the European Space Agency, Agency and Libra Space Foundation. Uh, Libra Space Foundation is, uh, is sort of like the, the prime contractor in the project and uh, goes out uh, scouting for, uh, for people who, to implement uh, the various things. Or, and uh, we try to focus or we are running a short duration projects, many, many small projects. And if a project cannot do everything in one round, then we just maybe consider taking a second round instead of having one very long project and uh, which may never finish. <laughs> I try to illustrate how uh, the actual workflow is running with these small projects. So Libra Space Foundation starts by uh, scouting and presenting some areas of interest where we want, we want to explore. Then uh, 
people or potentially implementors, they uh, write a proposal. And when I, write, when I say write a proposal, it's quite informal, so we don't want a uh, 200-page uh, proposal and things like that. No, just describe, uh, describe the project that uh, you want to do and what we are interested in. And after a few iterations, that proposal becomes a statement of work to be executed. Then the work is ex executed in several uh, phases. Uh, I illustrated three tasks or three phases, but it can be any number of phases that fit into the time frame allocated. And there are milestones in between and weekly activity meetings, uh, mostly using online collaboration tools. Uh, clearly, some people live uh, at the same place and work at the same place, but we are really trying to just use the tools we have available. Once the project is concluded, we either we usually have some source code that is available on GitLab and a final report for the project. Currently, or uh, I try to group uh, the, the uh, sub-activities we have at the moment or have planned already now uh, for the future, group them in uh, three groups. As you can see, we have some uh, GNU radio contributions or GNU radio work, uh, some testing, and uh, more uh, R&D-like uh, work. Uh, the GNU radio uh, contributions co co currently have the GR SOPI, which uh, we had a presentation about earlier today, GR LEO, which is a satellite communications channel simulator, GR CCSDS, which is a transceiver uh, implementation, and uh, IQ storage, uh, which I will talk a little bit more about later. So, uh, yeah, these are uh, the projects that either have concluded or being worked on or we know is going to be starting very soon. But since uh, we have about, uh, I don't know, six months left uh, for, from the, in the project, we will probably get more activities uh, as time goes. So, yeah, now I will talk a little bit about some of the activities that have been concluded and we'll try to leave some good time for uh, uh, questions and discussions at the end. Uh, GRSOP has been presented earlier this morning, so I'm not going to talk a, a lot about it, but it uh, was intended to uh, bring a, a new hardware protection layer into GNU Radio using the SOP SDR API. And the main difference between uh, uh, GR SOPI and the GR Osmo SDR, which we already have today, is that it has a, a plugin based uh, uh, architecture. So it loads the driver backends as plugins, which uh, will make it much easier to distribute to the end users at the end and make, will make it much, e much, we will be able to support new hardware much faster and much easier than we had been able to with GR Osmo SDR. And uh, as the author of GQRX, I can tell you that has been a uh, quite a challenge. So I'm looking forward to what we can do with uh, this eventually. But already today it is available and is out, out of tree module. The project has concluded and it works. If you install it, you will get a, a signal and a source block in uh, your GRC, uh, uh, GNU Radio Companion, and uh, you just drag and drop the blocks and it should work out of the box. You, you need to know the device strings you, that you would use in SOAP SDR, but other than that, it uh, it's just really simple plug and play, like in GRC. The second project that has uh, concluded is uh, GR Leo, which is a satellite channel uh, simulator for uh, or communication links. And uh, what it does is uh, to simply simulate uh, the, the, the free space loss and all the, uh, the uh, in, uh, losses that we get. Uh, uh, when we send signals uh, through the atmosphere. And there are some uh, ITU recommendations that describe uh, or provide some mathematical models. Uh, I think we also use some other literature for implementing it. And uh, so it was basically just implementing it and making it, av it available as a GNU radio block. Uh, probably you can't see what's going on here, but it was just to illustrate uh, how relatively simple it is to use. It's, uh, this, is a, this is one of the examples that comes with the out of tree module. Uh, and first we have, this is just to generate a, a, a baseband signal, a frequent, an FSK baseband signal. And we have the actual uh, channel simulator block there. And the rest here is just GNU radio visualization tools. Uh, these blocks here are the parameters, are the simulation parameters required to, to configure 
to uh, you need to simulate the satellite orbit. It actually simulates the passage of the satellite in real time, so you can simulate your uh, communication link as if the satellite was passing over a ground station. You can uh, configure different type of antennas for both the satellite and the ground station, and uh, uh, you can actually also. Uh, 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 use different uh, uh, channel models. Uh, currently, I, I think we only have the LEO channel model, but uh, it has been made so that in the future it can be expanded with other models as well. If you run this uh, simulation, you will get a nice uh, real-time uh, running application in GNU radio. And what you can see here is uh, actually the, the Doppler shift uh, of the signal as the satellite gets close to the time of closest approach. So. Uh, one thing that will be really interesting with uh, this GRLEO uh, simulation is that it can also be used for testing uh, with hardware in the loop. Uh, on this uh, picture you can see here is uh, an electrical mock-up of a satellite. It's a very simple one. Uh, there is a power, power uh, system with a solar cell simulator. There's some command and data handling unit, some GPS, and the actual communication unit. Now you can could connect your, this communication unit to a good SDR receiver you have, probably through some attenuation uh, as necessary, and then run the baseband through the GRLEO block, of course with proper mission parameters, and then run your software-defined radio receiver that you intend to use for the mission and get the mission data out of it. So I think this will be very useful, both for, uh, for people who build satellites and uh, also for us as one of the next uh, projects where, where we actually want to create a, a test bed for testing SDR devices and SDR uh, software with real hardware in the loop. Um, so finally, uh, the last GNU, or not the last, uh, one of the last GNU radio uh, projects was the GRCCSDS uh, transceiver blocks. It's, uh, uh, CCSDS uh, is, uh, I will not even attempt to guess what the acronym is for, but it's a body who defines a lot of standards for space uh, communication, for exchanging data over the whole, uh, all layers of a space uh, mission, including, uh, for example, they have standards for how a ro planetary rover has to send data to uh, an orbiting uh, relay station and how to compress images. And... Uh, there are these three standards that define how to send uh, telemetry, telecommand, and how to modulate these, uh, the, the signals. And uh, the GRCCSDS uh, project it will implement uh, at least a, a, a good representative subset of these uh, standards so that we can uh, use them in, uh, in the GNU radio applications. And so the way it works is we have uh, mission data coming in, the CCSDS transceiver, an SDR device, and an RF front end. So it will be a complete uh, transceiver for space applications. And uh, to put it in context with the previous slide with this uh, hardware in the loop simulation, the GRCCSDS transceiver would actually be this part here called GNU radio receiver or transceiver. So it will be pluggable straight into this uh, test setup. Now the final GNU radio uh, work we are actually just started is uh, IQ uh, database, IQ storage and compression because uh, as you can imagine with those, those thousands of observations every day in the SATMAX network we have actually a big challenge. We need to store data. Uh, the way it works is that uh, the observer uh, schedules an observation through the network. The network uh, sends the request to a, the client which is the actual ground station the ground station will then run uh, the GNU radio applications, and when the pass is, is over, they will send the data back to the network and uh, make it available for the observer or the users. Currently, we are uh, saving uh, waterfall images, uh, audio recordings, uh, that's for historical reasons, and uh, demodulated data, which is sent back. Uh, we would really like to store IQ data, at least the low-rate uh, IF IQ data for uh, later reference, and also uh, with respect to uh, when the new satellites are launch launched, then our network has been proven quite valuable in the orbit determination of these satellites, and for that it would be nice to have some IQ recordings to work with. 
but uh, that will require some efficient storage. Uh, so this project will look both at uh, compressing the IQ data and storing it efficiently. And uh, SIGMF is, of course, uh, on the table for uh, storing the metadata for it. So, um, yeah, and uh, finally, uh, we uh, have a lot of test and evaluation activities going on. And uh, we uh, evaluate both hardware and software. On the hardware side, we want to test uh, the hardware on the real which means we, are not, we don't want to confirm what the data sheet is, is saying. I mean, we trust that if they say a, a device has a 3 dB noise figure, we trust that's correct. But we also know that in practice, you will never use a device in an environment where you actually get that 3 dB noise figure. You will always have to back down the gain to get maximum uh, uh, dynamic range and things like that. So, uh, and you always have some RF noise in your environment. You know, there's no point in measuring it in an EMC room, right, if you don't have it in reality. So, uh, and we also will perform radiation testing of selected devices with... Uh, uh, clearly, the objective is to see can any of them uh, meaningfully be used in maybe uh, satellites in the future and look at FPGA tool chains, uh, alternatives for the tool chains that uh, the vendor, FPGA vendors give us, and uh, also the criteria like uh, uh, complexity of the, of the devices, of the drivers, of the software, of the tool chains, and how open source friendly uh, they are uh, in, uh, in general. So. Uh, yeah, but that's basically all I had uh, to say. So, uh, clearly, thanks to the European Space Agency for uh, believing in uh, in open source uh, in the, as a future, and the uh, Libre Space Foundation for the amazing work uh, that has been done for years now, and of course the Satnox community, who unknowingly are uh, the guinea pigs for uh, testing all the stuff uh, we are doing. So, be happy to answer any questions. Yes. On the CC, um, the CCSD, uh, yes. Yeah, because it's, it's, um, this gives a, um, a kind of um, definition of what needs to be done, but what do you do when the, the people do not submit the coding schemes? Uh, they, they keep it closed, so you get the data, but you, you cannot read the, the data. Yeah, so the question was what do we do when uh, we have. Uh, we, when we receive satellites where, where we don't have the published uh, uh, data format. That's, uh, that's a big problem we are fighting. Uh, it's, it's actually already a problem in uh, the Satnox network. And uh, uh, currently we are uh, only... Res uh, are, uh, so the, the, to answer the question, the CCSDS is, for that project, it's not a problem, right? Because the CCSDS, uh, uh, it kind of tells you how you encapsulate the data. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Manolis. Yeah. Uh, so the data comes out, and uh, it's then, then it's left to the users to interpret it. Yeah, so we, yeah. But can you use the ESA to pressure people to be more open? Yeah, well, uh, so can we use uh, some... Yes, well, it's uh, clearly uh, also network grows and people realize its values, uh, we can put pressure on them and, well, I wouldn't call it put pressure on them, but try to educate them and enter the dialogue before they launch the satellite. Because after they launch the satellite and realize that they cannot communicate with it, of course they come to the amateur community and uh, cry for it, please help us, but then it's almost too late. So, yeah. Yeah, you uh, so. Yeah, so the question is uh, whether the UP set is uh, fully open source, correct? Yeah, it is fully open source and everything is on, uh, in GitLab, uh, in the GitLab repository. Hardware designs uh, and the software. Okay. Yes, there was one. So the question was how to contribute to the SDR Makerspace project. 
Yeah, so the SDR Makerspace project is, uh, is uh, sort of uh, geographically uh, limited because of the way uh, the, the, this, this works. Uh, but uh, there is, uh, the SATNOX itself can be joined by anyone. And uh, so at least through that. Uh, but anyway, talk to uh, Pieros or somebody who knows more about it, how it works. But uh, I think currently it's, yeah, it's him. Uh, uh, yeah. So, yes? Mm. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, so the question was whether we could integrate uh, GRCCSDS into GQRX. So personally, I, I always try to keep GQRX as simple as possible. But having said that, I've always also been open to make some sort of plug-in framework, plug-in-like framework that makes sense because clearly you want tools to be expandable. Uh, so we'll see in the future. Yeah, I think that was yeah. Yes, it's uh, something we would like to, uh, the question was about FPGA in the cloud. It's something we would like to look into. Uh, uh, personally, I don't know much about that, uh, or cloud in general. <laughs> I'm a low-level uh, guy, a low-level programmer. But, uh, I mean, already today you can, uh, I think it's Amazon. Oh, Amazon offers everything, so I'm sure they also offer that you can uh, run some FPGA uh, IP cores in their cloud service. So. Uh, yeah, we would like to explore it. There is one more question can, there. But I think we need to start yeah. okay. changing mm. people over. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Feel free to keep talking.